Good day everyone, welcome back to the prehistoric fauna zoo world. Today I'm going to be building a Megapnosaurus enclosure. And yes, this is another small dinosaur enclosure. I've really been enjoying building the small dinosaur enclosures. Megapnosaurus is a Coelophysid theropod um, and it lived 188 million years ago. There you go, there's your fact about the dinosaur. It's actually funny because when you look at the Wikipedia article, it says Megapnosaurus is an extinct genus of Coelophysid. They just have to confirm that it's extinct, that's so funny. All right, I'll talk a bit about my plan for the build. I wanted to have a shelter building for the Coelio... Well, I was about to say Coelophysis. I wanted to have a shelter building for the Megapnosaurus to sleep in and I wanted to have a shelter building for all the park visitors to look into the enclosure and see the Megapnosaurus all running around even though they seem to be nocturnal so I think they're asleep the whole time but it's the idea that counts. And the foliage and theme for the enclosure is I wanted to go sort of wooded theme like uh, foresty and also overgrown so there's a lot of grass a lot of ferns and I've got some yellow flowers in for a bit of pop of color and I think it looks really good so you'll see it close to the end of the video and it is located right next to the Avaceratops enclosure which I made in the last episode I'm really glad the last episode had a lot of great reception especially with Bobo look forward to more stuff like that and this is my eighth enclosure build in the world and I think once I've done my 10th build I'm gonna do a world tour maybe I'll get a guest on maybe I'll get one of the whimsies on but yeah look forward to that I think I've definitely got to make some sort of zoo entrance to the zoo before I do the world tour but before that I've got to figure out a spot to put that because I've got no idea where I want to put that at the moment I know a lot of people are waiting for the next episode of this world and I ran into a problem with the mod pack um what happened was on CurseForge, there was a new button that appeared that said update all mods. I was like, oh, cool, sweet as, I'll just update all the mods. And it completely broke the mod pack. Um, and it wasn't until today that I found out that Bobo, the, the staff in my human enclosure that you might have seen in the last episode, he still had the old mod pack file. So he sent it to me and I finally got it back. And yeah, I'm able to build in this world again. I'm so happy because I've been wanting to make a new episode for so long now. Yeah, so take caution when updating your mod pack. You don't want to break it like I did. Anyway, I'm working on the floor of the enclosure now. And as you can see, I've put spruce planks around the edges of the enclosure. And this is because when I used to work at wildlife parks, the animals like the cassowaries or the emus or the kangaroos or joeys or Tasmanian devils, pretty much any animal that can walk, um, they would all paste the edges of the enclosure and it would build up a lot of dirt instead of grass. Um, and I guess it's because there's something on the other side that they can smell. I get, like for example, for the wallabies, uh, the f males and females would be separated uh, so they don't breed and they could still smell each other because the walls of the enclosure were connected. They could smell each other on the other side of the walls but they couldn't see each other so they would pace the wall uh, trying to smell each other I guess. It would make a little path on the edges of the enclosure and I thought it was a really neat detail to include in this enclosure since I feel like dinosaurs would also pace the edges of the enclosure. So yeah, if you're building a zoo and you want to make it more accurate, build more paths on the edges of your enclosures. Another thing you'll notice that I've done in this enclosure is that I've put pink terracotta in the rocks around the enclosure. And this is like a way for me adding variation to all my different enclosures because in the rocks in my other enclosures, uh, there's, no, there's no pink rocks. Um, and the way I guess I'm trying to make it feel natural is that the reason why it's pink is because there's a specific type of mineral that is in the rock making it pink. I don't know, just trying to add some color as well to the build. And I think it's really cool and it separates it from all my other builds. And you can also see that I'm working on some pine trees. Um, yeah, my trees are never really that special. If I had mangrove roots, I would try and add some little mangrove root branches, but this is 1.16.5, so there's no mangroves. <laughs> um, but I still think these trees are really nice. Um, one thing I do want to improve on in Minecraft is building trees. 
because I think these are like B tier trees like I've seen worse trees but I've definitely seen way better trees like I've seen actually maybe these are even C tier trees I wouldn't rate them too high um, but yeah I think the trees are okay and like they're not the main thing about the build they're just one of the puzzle pieces that makes the build look so good and now I'm doing the foliage in the build and you can see that I'm using these purple flower sorry purple I mean yellow yellow flowers and I just placed a few patches of them around the enclosure and I also put some pods all in the floor just because I feel like the brown of the dirt was a bit too bright and I needed some dark brown and now you can see me putting a lot of tall grass and ferns and normal grass and yes this is a very overgrown enclosure but I think it's very nice I don't really have one that's this overgrown yet I think it's good because it adds some nice camouflage spots for the Megapnosaurus and um I think it looks so cool as well I love the overgrown looks uh, and I want to do them more Anyway, we're coming pretty close to the end of the speed build here. So I hope you did enjoy me rambling for the best part of like six and a half minutes. Um, and I hope you did enjoy the speed build. Let's check it out in game. Hello there. Are you ready? Whoa, that's my pants. Are you ready to see the build? I know I am. Um, I, I feel like I say that every time I record the start of the tour. Um, but yeah. In the last episode, I built this protoceratops, no, no, protoceratops, uh, avaceratops enclosure. And yes, very happy with it. And right next door is, is Bobo's cafe. Um, he's actually on his break. I let him have a break. Um, I'm lying. He's hiding somewhere. Right next to Bobo's cafe is the Megapnosaurus enclosure. And I've put a nice glass wall in here and it is reinforced so they can't break through and you can see these guys look at him he's so cute and he's also nocturnal i think um so they're all asleep which sort of sucks um but i think this enclosure is really beautiful i want it to look good from the visitor's perspective um and also from a flying over top perspective and also just walking through as well i guess but yeah i love this forest feeling whoa what are the legs doing? Do you see that? He looks chill. That's awesome. Wait, what is this guy's legs doing? Where do they have legs when they're sleeping? I don't think they have legs. I think their legs just sort of hang out like that when they're sleeping. That's so cute. But yes, they're all asleep in their little sheltered area as well. Look how cute they are. But yeah, I feel like this is another very pretty enclosure that I've made. I do really love the prehistoric one. It has a lot of small dinosaurs because I love making small dinosaur enclosures. They're so fun. Um, and look at this guy. He's having a sleep by the water. Oh, this is great. But yeah, honestly, there's not a whole lot to show. I made this garden bed as well. And I put a bunch of lampposts around. And you can also access the shelter by over here. And if you keep going along the path, there's another path that eventually is going to go up the hill and like sort of circle around the Avaceratops enclosure and it's going to go up here. And I was thinking of having another enclosure up here on the hill. And maybe I'll get rid of some of these trees and we'll be able to have a lookout over the zoo from here. But yes, another enclosure making this zoo feel even more complete. Um, it's far from complete though, and I'm hoping to get at least 50 dinosaurs in this zoo. But yes, I think I'm going to end the video there. I hope you did enjoy, and if you want some more Lurikit content, I'm doing a survival series on a multiplayer server called Whimsycraft, and I recommend suggesting it out, especially if you like Hermitcraft. And if you did enjoy this video, please subscribe. It helps out my channel a lot, and I really appreciate it. But anyway, I'm going to end the video here. Bye-bye everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>